Hello, AOS fans, Robin here again this week with another Word Wednesday, so it's no Pete, uh, he's on video editing. Hi Pete. Today's Word Wednesday word will be cooking, and I present to you Dorling Kindersley, DK's Science of Cooking, a geeky topic if ever there was one. Um, I am a chemist by trade, once upon a time, long ago, and I do enjoy a bit of cooking. And people always say, oh, you're a chemist, you'd be good at, you'd be good at cooking too. And it's, it's fair to say the two are related. Um, I don't know whether that one uh, means you're good at the other, but um, I was reasonably good at chemistry, though not great in the lab. My cooking, my cooking skills aren't too bad. The family don't complain too much. I enjoy it. And uh, I'm no master chef. I'm no uh, Michelin star uh, chef. But uh, the stuff that goes out of my kitchen is, is edible, at least. Um, and the more the older I've got, the more I've learned about how cooking works. I suppose it's inevitable, really. You've got more experience. Um, and with uh, chefs like Heston Blumenthal, um, bringing science into the kitchen, I guess this kind of book was inevitable for all you geeky cooks out there. So this one is um, the science of cooking, every question answered to give you the edge. It's on a knife there, it's quite clever, isn't it? Um, and it's by uh, Dr. Stuart Farrymond, who is presumably a doctor of food or something like that. I'm sure it says in the book somewhere what he is. Uh, and this is priced, published by DK and it's £20. And as usual, I've got to put the dollar price. I don't know what the dollar price is, so I should get Pete to flash that up. But it'd be about $25, I imagine. So let's have a look inside the book. There we go, the contents page. A few uh, hexagons for you, because hexagons means science. These are all shades by um, and um, so we've got the chapters of the book are taste and flavour, kitchen utensils, meat and poultry, fish and seafood, eggs and dairy, rice grains and pasta, uh, vegetables, fruits, nuts and seeds, herbs, spices, oils and flavourings, and uh, baking and sweet things at the end. And I mean, I, I really like this book. Not all these books that I do for World Wednesday, I do always really like them. If I get what I don't like, I don't tell you about it. There'd be no point in that, but it, you know, it approaches, it approaches cooking in a scientific way, I suppose. So why do we cook? To help us socialise, to, to soften starches. I think more to help us socialise than soften starches, but yes, to soften starches and to enhance the flavour and to aid digestion. And of course, to make food safe. Um, and then there's a section on how we actually taste. And so I'm going right back um, to different tastes um, and going right back to basics then really of why why we taste so you can learn how to um, learn to cook or learn to, to sort of you know what you're aiming you're cooking at and why you put certain things in what you put in your dishes uh, why does food taste so good why does cooked food taste so good so there's a sort of what happens in the actual scientific process of, of, of what happens to the food when you cook it which is stuff I didn't particularly know and I was never really considered so on this page we have uh, various uh, different flavors and how they how they connect and there's beef in the middle and lots of these things have different comparisons with beef so egg a fried aroma molecule decadinal 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 both of which are found in cooked beef so they say there's all these links to beef uh, peanut butter the heating and grinding of peanuts in butter make making creates nutty flavored pyrazines and fried smoky aromas with, with, that pair extremely well with beef. So it's kind of like food and its connection to beef. And to be honest, who doesn't need more beef in their life unless you're a vegan or a vegetarian, then you probably want this. But you know, you're probably not watching this. Uh, so this is going on there, looking at utensils, so essential guide to knives. My knives are basically the cheapest ones I can find that don't you know, break, uh, which I may be, after reading this book, I will, uh, I will change that. And then frying pans, again, similarly, I don't spend much on my frying pans. That's, that's what you should look for, the things you need, a thermometer. I'm thinking of getting a thermometer after reading this book. I don't have one. They always look exciting on cooking programs when they stick thermometers in things. But um, things like uh, tempered chocolate and stuff like that always looks like it's an interesting idea to, to do and you do need a, th a thermometer for that kind of thing. And it explains why in this book. So then we go through the meats and um, a big section on meat and the different cuts and why you should cook it and what slow cooking does. Uh, is brown, why is meat gone brown? Is it bad or not bad? Why do they taste so different? The different blood compositions of, uh, of meat. Um, and the book goes on and on. 
like this, I flip forward a little bit. Why is it so expensive to buy Wagyu beef? Fat ripple beef and Wagyu cattle is some of the most sought after in the world, so it explains why, why it's the most important. And then free uh, organic, free range of indoor chickens, pounding your meat, uh, what are the benefits of marinating meat, um, smoking meat, let's just talk about meat, 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 vegetarians, please look the other way, slow cooking, what to do with overcooked meat, what's the secret of a tasty sauce, and so it's got the kind of scientific uh, look at the different ways of making sauces and why you might make them and what they go with, and, and it sort of looks, I suppose it, look, it looks at the science behind why you cook what you're cooking. Um, so why do many foods toad taste like chicken? And you've got to look at the white meat muscles and the red meat muscle. Just to do with the type of muscle. Um, there, and then we get into fish and seafood. And I know in the fish and seafood, it talks about different types of meat, different ways of cooking, different types of fish, different ways of cooking the fish, pan, pan, pan frying it. it. Talks about sous vide, possibly the sort of scientific method of cooking anything, putting it in a vacuum bag and <laughs> boiling it in a vacuum. That's what sous vide is anyway, there it is, look, yeah. Uh, I know uh, some of the geek dads have got uh, sous vide uh, machines, I've, I've not got one, I could just imagine my wife, uh, when I put one of those on the table, um, on the workshop, we haven't got very much space in our workshop, you would be thrilled to have a, a sous vide machine on there. Um, can I eat sashimi safely? Should I play sushi go? Yes, you should play sushi go. Um, cooking mussels, and then onto eggs and dairy. I know in here it explains why eggs float when they're going off. Um, should you limit how many eggs you should eat? And another important aspect of this book is it talks about the health aspects of, of, of your food and tries to debunk some of the myths around it and whether certain things are good for you or whether they're bad for you. Uh, there's a section on reheating rice, really important. Uh, it was quite old before I realised reheating heat. There were risks involved to reheating rice. But I couldn't kill any of my children. Um, storing your eggs. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's the, the chart on how to test whether your eggs are fresh, poaching eggs, runny yolks, the perfect scrambled egg. Um, how, can you how can you prevent split mayonnaise? Buy in a bottle. Um, so it's easy. Different types of milk, non-dairy milks and dairy milks, or dairy milk chocolate. Who likes dairy milk chocolate? Hands up. That's one for you English viewers there. Uh, Pasteurising milk, why we do it. Uh, which type of cream should you use? Single cream, whipping cream, double cream, clotted cream, sour cream, creme fraiche, and the different fat contents and, and what you do with them. Ice cream makers, making yogurts. Cheese! Where would the world be without cheese? How to make, and then, and then the rice grains of pasta, this is where the different types of rice, it tells you how to cook rice, uh, how much rice should you add, how to make fluffy rice every time. Rinse it mainly. Uh, then there's the reheating rice thing, and the book goes on and on with the trademark, uh, good quality text, and good quality pictures. The science of popcorn. I show this to my kids how my popcorn explodes. Um, how to make pasta. Um, there's a bread section which we'll get to in a minute. Steaming vegetables. We're on to vegetables now. Uh, is our organic fruit and vegetables better than non-organic? I'll leave you to read that yourselves. So I'm sure some of you will have an opinion on that. Uh, do vegetables lose nutrients as they age? Delicate vegetables versus hardy vegetables, where you should store them. Should you scrub or peel them? Steaming them. Why do different peppers taste different? And the whole, I, should get, I haven't read this bit yet, but I'm gonna have a definite look at that because we will have, often have debates about uh, which peppers are nicest in our house? Uh, some of us like the red ones, some of us like the green ones. Uh, green flavour packed with green tinted chlorophyll. Green peppers are firm and the most aromatic with a fresh green smell. I have no sense of smell, so I have no idea what green smells like. Um, how to use, chop into small pieces and use sparingly in stews, curries to bring added freshness and vibrancy. A red pepper, which is our most eaten red pepper. Red peppers are sweet and juicy with a deep colour due to pigments called capsanthin and capsarubin. How to use, use to add body and flavour to sauces and stews or stuff with grains, minced beef or feta. Uh, purple, I don't know much about purple, how occasional purple pepper, they're often used as a contrasting green interior to make visually stunning salads or crudities. 
Well, I occasionally come out with a stunning crudity, but um, I, I, I've never used a, a black pepper in them. Uh, brown flavoured peppers, a fair of red pepper varieties, brown peppers ripen to a rich mahogany brown and have a sweet flavour. How do I roast vegetables without going, going soggy? I don't read that. I have a problem with soggy vegetables. Um, perfect vegetable stir fry. Potatoes, lots of about the potato. And it goes on and on and on, a bit like I am now about this book. Uh, microwavy. How does lemon juice stop uh, sliced fruit from turning brown? How do bananas help ripen other fruit? All these things you kind of hear about. Oh, you know, don't, you know, don't put your bananas in the fruit box because it makes it all go right. Oh, go rotten. Can I cook <laughs> soft fruit from frozen? Pre-frozen soft fruits are available. Uh, open the oven door to the possibility of a year-round blueberry muffins and a great alternative for fresh fruits and desserts. Providing you understand how sub-zero temperatures change the soft fruit. It talks about the cell damage in, in thawed blueberries. So again, this, this book is absolutely stuffed full of information. Things you didn't know, you didn't know, or didn't need to know. Uh, um, <clears throat> nuts. Uh, how do I enjoy? How can I enjoy the freshest nuts? A question many of us want to know. And why are so many uh, food metaphors, or sound a bit rude, I don't think that's explained in here. Herbs, or for those of you uh, watching in um, America, uh, herbs, or as any of you would say, you call it herbs, and we call it herbs because it's got a f***ing H on it. Um, yeah, so dried herbs, when should I add herbs during cooking? Uh, add its strength flavour from spices, and then chilies, the Schofield scale, uh, Schofield scale. no self-respecting geek uh, would uh, pretend that he didn't know anything about the um, Schofield scale, so let's talk about the heat, the hot of peppers. Uh, chipotles, I mean, have enough chipotles, I didn't know, they were peppers. I just, chipotles, so I didn't know what it was, if that's how, even how it's pronounced. Um, but, yeah, so, Going through the book, going to, I'm going to skip to the back now. We've got a nice index. Uh, I'm going to go to the sweet section because you know there's bread, cake rising. Uh, it talks about there was a bit in here about your oven, how to make sure you get the best out of your oven. My oven's a bit on the blink, and it's sort of you know turn it on well in advance so you get it nice and hot, and then it's easy you get better control. Uh, overworking paste. Why shouldn't you overwork paste? We talked about the gluten structures again. A lot of science in bread making. Anybody watch the Great British Bake Off? It has a bit of scientific understanding, which they kind of touch on a little bit in the program. Uh, but here it's got the science behind uh, why you don't overwork your bread and how, how your pastry, how your bread rises, why the laminations in puff pastry are really important. The science of it is all in here. How do I prevent my pie from getting a soggy bottom? Brush it with beaten egg, apparently. Uh, and then the different types of sugar, how to make marshmallows, mm -mm -mm. setting jam, caramelization, here's your thermometer for the caramelization, and I think, yeah, how do you make a chocolate ganache, uh, and different types of chocolate, and melting chocolate, melting and tempering chocolate, it's got a crystal structure diagrams of uh, the sort of different chocolates to get your chocolate to, to snap. Uh, again, you need a, a thermometer to do that how to make souffles, how to rescue your souffles, lots and lots of interesting stuff. So once again, Doyle and Kindersley have nailed it with uh, The Science of Cooking. Um, it's a great book. Obviously, Christmas holiday season is just around the corner. If you've got somebody who's slightly geeky in your life and they um, like doing a bit of cooking, um, and for those of you who've got men in your life who think they know how to do the barbecue, there's a section on barbecues in there as well. Could be useful, could save you from um, Child on the outside and raw in the middle uh, next summer. So, yeah, think ahead. Uh, that is, you know, this is a great book. I really like it. I'm pretty supposed to like it. As you, a lot of these books I am because they're full of lovely pictures, lots of information. I do like a bit of science and a bit of chemistry and a bit of cooking too. So if you've got somebody in your life who likes those things, then bear it in mind for them. If you do like those things, then bear it in mind for you. Uh, that is The Science of Cooking uh, by DK, uh, by Dr. Stuart Faramond. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you watched the end. And um, yeah, uh, that's the end of this week's Word Wednesday video. And uh, I'm sure we will be back with another one maybe in a week. Okay, until then, take care, guys, and happy reading. Bye.